Hey there friends and neighbors, Bobby here tonight and we're out in the garage and tonight we're going to show you how to cut, flare, and bend steel tubing. So stay tuned and we'll show you how we get this done. Okay friends, before we get started, let's take a look at some of the uses that you'll be able to uh, utilize out of learning how to cut, bend, and flare your own steel tubing. Uh, let's take a look here right quick. Now, this vehicle has an automatic transmission in it. Um, so these are my trans cooler lines. Notice I made them out of steel. Uh, coming up from the transmission to the point on the firewall where there's two couplers for easy disconnect in case I have to pull the transmission out quickly. Um, cooler lines are run down this roll bar to the trans cooler. Um, also, let's note here that we ran our own fuel line uh, from the tank up to the pump and from the pump up to the regulator in steel, okay? Also, I noticed over here uh, at one point when I installed this uh, line lock, I had to fabricate some brake lines. So all this stuff here I made myself and uh, with knowing how to actually work with this tubing. That's what I'm going to show you today, so stay tuned. Okay, friends, here's some of the uh, tools that you'll need to uh, possess to be able to do this type of work. First of all, we have a couple different type of uh, tubing cutters. We've got a, a regular size one and we have a little small one to get in tight areas. We have a double flaring uh, kit here. This is your uh, flaring bar here. These are all your little um, fittings that you'll use for different size tubing to do your double flare. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. And you'll need a simple uh, tubing bender. So let's get started. Okay friends, let's go ahead and start with uh, cutting a piece of tubing. What we're going to do is we're going to use our little uh, tubing cutter today because our big cutter actually has a broken blade on it. I just realized that. So we're going to go and use our little cutter. Typically I would use the bigger one. But uh because this one actually is a little aggravating aggravating to use because it's so small, but it's great for tight places. Like if you're working on a brake line on a car and you're underneath the car doing it. So you just uh, rotate it around a couple times, tighten up a little bit on it as you go. Now, remember this would be a lot quicker with the larger one. So there we go. Okay, friends, so that's cutting a piece of tubing. Now, on the... Uh, when you're done with that, because we're going to do a flare on this, take take your, this uh, piece here. It's usually attached to any of your uh, uh, larger tools. What you're going to do is just clean up inside this tubing, because uh, what's going to happen there's going to be some flashing that goes like toward the center. You just want to take it, rotate it around, kind of clean up that flashing just a little bit. Okay, next, friends, we're going to go ahead and randomly put a uh, couple bends on a piece of tubing here. Okay. And what you'll have to do is take your tubing uh, bender and actually clamp it in a bench vise. I should have mentioned earlier that a bench vise is going to come in real handy as a tool that you're going to need to do this type of work. So let's just, look, first of all, let's stick it down here. Let's put a bend like this far down. Just go ahead and put it in there. Put a little bit of weight on it and just pull to you. And you can actually, see that's put like a maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 degree bend. But if you wanted to bend it all the way around, you would simply just maybe come back off of that a little bit, keep working it, keep working it, pull up, pull back a little bit, keep working it around, pull back a little bit more. Pretty soon we're going to have a 90. So there you go. There's a 90 degree bend right there, friends. And let's say you had to make another bend this way. You can just go ahead and bend it here and just keep working with it. Sometimes it's good to take some measurements, you know, before you actually start bending once you figure out where where you want to make your bends up. So there we go. We put two little bends in this piece of tubing. So now let's move on to the uh, flaring part of it. Okay, friends, we have our flaring tool um, clamped in our bench vise. Let's go ahead and put our piece of tubing in here. Now, notice that there's all different size uh, holes here for different size lines. We're working with 3 8 fuel line today, so we're going to put it in the 3 8 hole. Now, this little dewey right here is your double flare tool that you're going to need. Now, the distance from the bottom to right there, I don't know if you can tell where my fingernail is, that first step, you want to have, you want to sit down here on the flaring tool, and you want to have the piece of pipe tubing coming flush with that first step, okay? 
Now once you get that, I'm going to go ahead and clamp this down in place, good and tight. Now, it's ready to go ahead and start the double flare process. So let's go ahead and stick this in place. Okay friends, now we'll just go ahead and stick our uh, flaring, other part of our flaring tool on here. I guess you'd call this like a jaw. And you stick it in the center of our little adapter there. And let's go ahead, it comes with a little handle, and you can go ahead and crank it down. Now, we would crank this down all the way flush if we were doing a double flare. But I want to, I'm not going to go all the way flush right now because I'm going to show you something else pretty neat that you can do with this. We're going to leave about a, probably about a sixteenth of an inch gap, or maybe a little bit more, between the flaring tool here and our little adapter. Let me show you what that looks like. Now folks, I went ahead and pulled this out of the uh, tool because I want to show you what that looks like when you do that. Actually, that puts like a little barbed end on the end of your line. If you ever run into a situation where you do need to install a rubber line, uh, this is a quick, easy way to put a little barbed end on your steel line to accept your rubber line. So let's continue. Let's get this jig back up and we'll continue on and show you the double flare. Okay, friends, we've got our piece back into the uh, flaring tool. Now let's go ahead and just crank this on down until our adapter is flush with our flaring tool. Okay, and that's just about it right there. So let's back off. Now we've went ahead and removed our clamp here and our adapter. Okay, let's stick this back on here and center it with the tubing and spin it back down take our handle and let's tighten this up now that's going to complete the double flare okay now be careful not to over tighten it to the point where you actually split the uh, steel tubing okay that seems about right right there let's take it out let's see what it looks like okay friends so here is your double flare completed okay so now what you would do would go ahead and pull your fitting up there and you would tighten it into whatever you were attaching it to and hopefully it won't leak too much haha ha, i'm just being funny folks this is a good little skill to learn you can make yourself some really neat uh, brake lines fuel lines transmission lines and stuff like that great for guys that are messing around with old race cars or old hot rods and stuff like that so friends thank you for watching the video today hope it helped a little bit Take care, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.